It's time for Monaco here in F122, my team. Very excited about this one. I'm keen to see how this all works out on 110AI. Before we do though, let's jump into the weekend preview. So, no rain forecast here at Monaco. Sunny conditions pretty much throughout the weekend. We have an engine power upgrade on the car. Also, update on the performance chart. You can see we're still second from bottom. Most teams still bring an upgrade pretty much every single race. And we also have a few more in the pipeline. Mainly durability related, but still, you know, upgrades on the car nonetheless. Now, before we jump into the thick of it and into the main action in qualifying, if you haven't seen the previous episode, go check it out. The Spanish Grand Prix link up in the top right. And if you'd like to enjoy this one, leave a like and subscribe for more daily F1 content on my channel. Now then, here we are tackling Monaco for the first time this season with, admittedly, this absolute boat of a car that we have. Now, we had a purple score, perfect score, in the track acclimatization. We got the 50 points. After that, we moved into ERS management. And this was a bit more of a challenge. Um, even though I made a mistake and I hit the wall, I didn't actually have the pace. And that was a recurring theme in practice, it felt like. I then tried the race strategy and more of the same, really. I didn't make any mistakes, but I just lacked a bit of pace and I wasn't fully able to get the lap time. I was pretty close up until La Rascas, which is where they seem to have bumped up the AI and also the, the Delta lap times because I lost loads of time through the final two corners and there wasn't much more I could really do. So yeah, unfortunately, um, I tried it a few times. I even tried it on the softs as well, as you'll see in a moment. I also tried it in FP2 as well and I couldn't get it done. That goes for the race strategy and also for the ERS management. You can see here I tried again hit the wall at Larasca, so another mistake. And just generally trying to find my confidence, I kept on changing the setup quite a lot. I was trying to find the sweet spot. I really noticed tire pressures around here played a key part, and I was trying to find what worked best. You can see here on the ERS management, I was trying to push, but I was nowhere near. So a little shake of the head, back off, and just go into the pits and call it quit. So yeah, like I said, it wasn't really going that well for us and um, we were struggling a little bit in terms of, you know, finding the balance and just the overall, I'd say, performance in the car in these conditions. With that said, uh, we scored a decent amount of R&D points. Uh, we're now up to 1,400. We then had a bunch of discounts applied to multiple upgrades. And I know the direction we have to take the car in now. We need to focus on drag reduction upgrades and also weight reduction. Those two are going to be the key developments of this car. Of course, we did just purchase fabrication level two on the chassis before this episode, and that did just arrive. So we can now do two upgrades per, you know, time on, on, on the chassis side. So we're not just capped to one, which is going to be good for us. With that said, qualifying is now underway. And you can see there's a, a tire there in the wall. Someone's had a crash or something. I couldn't find it on the replay, but maybe it's a buggy tire or a texture. I'm not really sure. Either way, end of our first lap here in qualifying and it's a 1-12-0 not really that great shake of the head again and I was a bit surprised it seems like another qualifying where we're just lacking pace and around Monaco it seems like the AI have actually had a pretty substantial bump to the 110 hour difficulty you know they're actually competitive as we hit the inside wall at Nouvelle for the third time this weekend I was really struggling with that chicane eventually I got on top of it in qualifying, I made a few adjustments to the tire pressures, and that made a big difference. I was actually running minimum pressures around here. As I did hear a rumor that apparently that does help, and I was kind of putting it to the test, and it did seem to help me out a little bit. Anyway, this was our best lap, so let's enjoy it. Into turn one, fourth gear, lots of inside curb, getting a nice clean traction out of turn one, already two and a half tenths up. Massinate down to fifth gear, turning a little bit later, to get that second apex as we then open up Casino, down the hill, harden the brakes into Mirabeau, get the inside hooked up there, and make sure you get that rotation on the camber. Into the low hairpin, in the first gear corner. I think actually second might work better in this game. Um, it's something that I found out after, but through this entire section now, third gear through Portier, getting the power down, bit of a steer on the exit, but look at this, half a second up, and this is a perfect lap so far. I was actually really, really happy with this. Into Nouvelle down to third, didn't quite turn in early enough there, but still 
The Angsia was the real issue as we had a double snap of oversteer and we lost nearly two tenths as I also lost a bit of time through okay, to back. Into swimming pool, now. trying to carry that speed through the entire sequence. We do find a little bit more time. Into the Raskas, a little bit hot on the brakes. I'll break myself slightly, but still pulling it back. And now the final corner, not the best exit, losing about half a tenth again. Up to the line we go, and it's a 1.11.6, which does push us above Paul Chair. And for now, it takes us off the bottom. But it wasn't really enough i tried again i put on another set of tires i went out early to give myself time in case i mess up the lap and would you believe it that's exactly what happened just straight away we invalidated the turn one so luckily we've got fuel and tires for you know one more so we're going to just cool the car down and try again but i wasn't improving um i was overdriving at this point trying way too hard nearly three times down and we're going to approach the new bell chicane on entry we just clipped the wall and that's pretty much it. So, yeah, it seems like Ocon was the car whose tyre was in the barrier belonged to. So Ocon DNFing in qualifying, which means officially we're not P22 anymore. So the streak has technically broken, although at the same time you could say we're still really last. So, yeah, qualifying over, even on a perfect lap, we weren't nowhere near. Um, I think maybe you could shave two tenths off that maybe three at best and maybe you know put us 1.6 seconds off but the pace was too strong from the others and we were nowhere near so yeah another poor qualifying struggling for pace but we'll see i have seen your comments and i'm considering dropping the difficulty for qualifying at least by a couple of numbers i'm thinking something like 106 for qualifying and 110 for the race uh, but we'll see what happens either way that's it for qualifying at monaco we're now going to move into the race Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world-famous Monte Carlo Casino, the first opened in 1863. And of course, a certain road race first held in 1929. And there's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then is not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and a very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Verstappen, George Russell, and Perez, Bottas, Norris, Magnussen, and Mick Schumacher, Fernando Alonso, Ricardo, Pierre Gasly, and Vettel, Stroll, Sonoda, Guan Yu Zhou, and Teo Porcher, Albon, Latifi, Martinez, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Now, here we are for the race at Monaco. We have a massive task on our hands. I don't know what to expect. I don't know realistically what we can achieve here. It does feel like the AI have been improved this year, which is good to see around Monaco because they've often been really, really poor around here. Also, it seems like it's not as easy to make your car fast around here as it was in the past. We've struggled all weekend, you know, for the balance, for the grip. So we're going to just try and stay alive this race and see if I can build up my confidence over the laps and then try to make something happen. Realistically, I want to try and stay out of any incidents and have a clean race, get no damage because the last few races have been very painful. Strategy for this one, I'm going to gamble. I'm going to try and start on the hard tire. That's the only risk I'm going to take. I could go for the medium, but I feel like everyone's going to go for that tire. So we'll start on the hard tire, go very, very long, as long as we have to go and maybe bank on a late safety car, a virtual safety car, who knows, and clear the traffic basically and get some clean air. Mediums at the end, possibly softs. We'll see how the race goes. Fuel-wise, I'm going to go 0.5 negative. I'm going to take a chance on fuel. Uh, we should save some of the pit stop and also lifting coast here is pretty straight, straightforward if you need it. So... Let's get into the race. ERS management will be key. It's going to burn up quite quickly. So let's get into it and let's see if we can, first of all, switch these tires on in the formation lap. Trying to get as much rear tire temp as possible. Trying to push the tires into the 90s. That's going to really help us out. Anyway, let's get ready. Let's line her up. Going to get a nice and straight. Oh, damn it. I slowed a bit too soon there. 
Well, that's not ideal. Anyway, we've got a decent tire temp, so let's get into it. Okay, let's do this. Spot the RPM. Decent start. We'll take that on the hard tire. Oh my god. Latifi just moved in the brake zone there. Luckily, we avoided contact. That's going to be a drag race up the hill. Who has got the straight line speed? Looks like Latifi's got the edge for now. Into Massonet. Trying to go the long way around. Which gives us the inside for Casino. Latifi just about closing the door, but we're going to go up the inside anyway. Try to fight back and make these moves happen. Going to squeeze on the outside of Albon here as well. On the outside of the Lowe's hairpin on Paul Chair. He might just sneak this through, but wasn't quite able to commit up the inside there. Still though, P19, a few places gained. Let's try and be careful here with Albon. I think we're going to be down quite badly on straight line speed, so we'll have to watch out. ERS is going to burn up really quickly in this race, I think, so management is going to be key. But let's see if we can try and make these hard tires work. That's going to be the real key factor here. I don't think I will, but I thought for this race I'd try something different, seeing as we've been struggling in the last few. And this is Monaco, ultimately, so it's a bit of a different track to the others. And this course also gives us a different strategy option compared to those on the alternate strategy. So let's see. But we're already a second behind pool chair. Definitely feels like the higher gears are the way to go in race trim. I've managed to get the car to work. Hard tires are now nicely in the temperature window. And we've got some decent pace. Now it's all about trying to manage that fuel and also manage tyre wear. We're not going to go anywhere realistically. I don't think we're going to have the pace to pull off any kind of overtake. But if we can just stay in this train, stay in DRS range and stay alive. And then just be ready for any safety cars or virtual safety cars that may happen. That's the best we can really hope for at this stage. That was perfect through there car definitely working pretty decently run out oh, back end getting a bit loose as we start to push the limits Paul Chair has dropped out of the RS range of Guan Yu Zhou so starting to close in a little bit on our teammate I still don't think I'm going to go for a move I don't think I'm that fast or have that level of confidence under traction just in this game period but we're competitive considering we're on a slower tyre we're keeping up with our teammate no big updates at the moment. I'm just trying to use higher gears because fuel consumption is higher than I thought. We're actually burning fuel, so I'm trying to use maybe some higher gears to pull some fuel back. So the gap to pull chair has increased slightly, but we're still in these DRS. We're just chilling here, to be fair. Seems like myself and Teo do have the slowest car, but we're just doing our job and just holding station right now. Things could get interesting, though, around the pit stop phase. We'll see how that works out for us. Still no pit stops, so even those who... Might be on softs, haven't stopped yet, which leads me to believe that everyone's probably on mediums on the exact same tyre, so pit stops should be happening over the next three laps or so. Completely out of battery now, so we're just chilling behind Porsche. I don't really have the pace for much more. I am on the limit pretty much every single lap. I was trying to run a bit higher gears to save some fuel. Just got went to the pit stop phase. The overcart could be key here because the cold tyres could play a part. So staying up one more lap and having those hot tyres might help you overcut someone and then you just defend position after on the next lap. But track position is everything, so we might look at the option for pool chair. Pool chair pits, I was catching in that lap quite a lot. In for his stop now. Let's see then, we're going to have cars leaving the pits. Let's see if Bottas is going to be a hold up or not. He's on cold tyres. Probably for the better if he actually stays ahead and pulls away, but... We might have the edge in these first few moments. As Bottas is on cold rubber, which is going to hold us up. Which is doing us no favours. More cars in the pits. We managed to get some DRS from Bottas. Tires are starting to really go now, though. But I've got to hold on to make the strategy work. We need to go a few more laps. I wanted to pit kind of now, really, and you know try to overcut Paul Chair. But it would put us in a bit of trouble because I don't know if I'd make up the mediums after. So... We need to kind of by force go a bit longer. We've been stuck in traffic now for the second lap in a row. This time behind Norris. I don't really have the rear tyres to get by, so we're going to have to just suffer it. Costing us time, but we'll just keep chipping away. Hopefully, we're still doing enough. 
Okay, Schumacher behind, and Magnussen as well. Let's see if I can keep them up behind for now, keep them at bay. I don't really have any ERS or anything to fight with, but... Just about enough rear tyres to stay in front, although to be fair this might be an issue. Up here, let's see. Okay, I think I've just about got this. I'm gonna pit soon though. I would like to stay longer and see if I can get a VSC or safety car slice of luck, but as we are on the points right now, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Okay, we're gonna box for our one and only stop. This is our pit stop lap. I could try to go longer, but I'm not gonna waste my time. Let's see. Decent pit entry there. Fuel-wise, that's a concern. I don't know if we're going to make it. I'm going to have to start saving now. I don't know if we've got track position over Paul Chair. I think we've probably lost places, to be fair. Yeah, we've lost so much time. Jesus. We're going to be pretty much last. Yep, yeah, we're going to be last here. Damn. Up to speed now. Let's get some heat into those tyres. Oh, that backfired. I tried to go long. The hard tire strategy didn't really work. Still, we have to try something different. Anyway, we'll still keep chipping away. You never know. Things could still change. Safety car could change the race. This is going to be my personal best lap of the race. 1.7 seconds up. 112.6. Not too shabby. And we're back behind these cars now. Ocon's out of battery. Now we wait to see what happens as we enter the final third of this race. Oh dear. Ocon having a moment there. I just hit the back of him. Not sure if I got damage or not. I think we're going to be okay. Let's try and get an overtake done in this race, man. Oh, damn it, lock up. I think I could pass Ocon on Latifi here. Give you guys a bit of action. Just about got that. <laughs> Kept it within track limits. So I think that will stand under the rule of the law. Nice little dive bomb there. Not the cleanest move, but we kept it on track limits. So we'll take that. My god, that was close. Trying to overtake while saving fuel. Quite extremely now. I'm running really high gears and no revs at all. The move at Raskas feels really tough to make this year. I've been trying for a few laps now, but it doesn't seem to want to happen. And I can't get any traction out the final corner. This is tough. We might get a lap, to be fair, which could be our saving grace for the fuel. That's not going to help, though. My God. What a moment. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Just about managed it. My god. That was close. There we go. P20. We're ahead of Latifi. Got to try and save this fuel. Now we're running out of laps to do so. Here we are then. Last lap of the race. Trying to save fuel. We're just about going to make it, I think. If not, we might run out out of the final corner. It's going to be close. Luckily, we're not really under threat from being overtaken. So P20 is going to be. Had I had fuel, I could have pushed on after Albon and Paul Chair and probably got them both, to be fair. So the strategy was fine. I just definitely miscalculated the fuel bit, so we had to take some pain. Fuel saving. Anyway though, here we are. La Rascas for the final time. Lewis Hamilton, your winner by the way. Great to see Lewis back up there. And there we go, out the final corner. Fuel saved, job done, and we're not last, so we'll take that. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. That's it then for another nail-biting Monaco Grand Prix. We were on the edge of our seats the whole time, but they've come through to take a stunning victory. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease.
after an excellent performance at the Grand Prix. I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team, and they certainly deserve it. There we go then, Monaco in the books and another painful race, but at least this time we finished and we had no damage. I kept it clean. You may have noticed I wasn't talking that much during the race, even during the overtakes I wasn't really talking. Um, whenever I try to speak in this race, there would be a lot of mistakes that would come from me, you know, snaps over the steering stuff, so I just had to keep the talking to a minimum. So this video might be a bit shorter to be fair. Nonetheless, Hamilton back on the top of the podium with a fastest lap as well, and he converted his pole position. So. A pretty flawless race from Lewis, dare I say a grand slam if he did lead every single lap. Carlos Sainz P2, Max Verstappen P3, Charles Leclerc P4, not great for the championship for him, ahead of Russell Perez P6, ahead of Bottas, Norris, Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen. Missing out on the points, Ricardo, Alonso, Gasly, Vettel, Sonoda, Zhu, or Zhu, Stroll, Porcher, Albon, myself, Latifi, Ocon and if we look at the standings after that race, we're still 12th, but Lando and Ricardo cut the gap. They scored points today. Lando equal on points with us, but we've got a higher position because we have scored a higher finish. Signs still top by 38 points in the constructors. We're currently eighth. Still got a three-point gap over Alpha Tauri as Mercedes overtake Red Bull. So again, that's all we're really looking at, the Constructors' Championship, and P8 for us is fine. McLaren do pull away a little bit, then are eight points ahead, which is quite a lot, but we'll keep chipping away. We did, of course, receive that level two uh, upgrade for the chassis department for the fabrication. So we can now do multiple upgrades at once. We're going to try and do the same for the Aero soon. But yeah, that's it, guys, from Monaco. We're now going to move into the menu and into upgrades. Now then, back in the office, we have still the cash warning, but we're nearly at a million. So I don't think that's going to be a concern. Activities until the next race in Baku. We're going to go ahead and take care of those. So then we're going to have a little look at the options we have. Chassis team building is going to be one that's worth it. Only a 5k penalty for that. Power equipment upgrade, we'll take that as well. And then we'll add some G-Force training and driver promotion filming as well. After that, you can see we've got quite a few things coming up. We've got upgrades on the 8th as well and on the 6th. We did have, though, a failure, I believe, on the chassis. The energy store cells, which is a shame, but we'll go ahead and repurchase for 211 points. We have the monocoque structure now available, 1,200 points. Quite expensive. Roll dampers for tire wear as well. Aero-wise... Drag reduction, these are the ones that we really want. So streamlined suspension arms is one that I fancy and I'm most likely going to try and get on the car ASAP. Engine, we've got the stators. For now, that's all we have available. So let's quickly double check. We do have a narrow upgrade on the way on the 6th, but I want to see if I can put that second one on there. If not, we're going to have to wait. Yeah, we're going to have to wait. Okay, that's a big upgrade. That is going to be huge for us. That might make a difference actually in the handling. So we're going to have to wait until the 6th when the front nose upgrade arrives, so let's skip ahead to that day. Oh God, just when I didn't need this to happen, it's happened, we've had a failure again. So front nose is gonna have to be repurchased for the front downfalls, not ideal. 329 points as well, it's gonna set us back. Do we have any super cheap upgrades on the durability? I want to see if we have any big discounts going on. No, it looks like we don't. We have just received a general wear upgrade from Mercedes, but that's about it. So we'll just save these points for now. I'm not going to go ahead and spend them on ERS or the tire wear. I could go for the monocoque structure, to be fair, but we're missing 70 points after having that failed upgrade. So a bit of a shame. Uh, we should get some more points between now and the 9th, so we'll do the upgrades in a moment. Now then, Baku, the next race, pretty hot lap coming up. We are 100% taken out for the Acclaim and the Cash. Messages, you can see confirmation here of the payment upgrade from Mercedes for the reliability. So, yeah, we go again next episode, guys, at Baku. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more daily F1 content on my channel. As always, a big shout out to the channel members for supporting the content. As always, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And yeah, guys, I'll see you next time. Until then, take care and that's goodbye from me.